All right, share a few things today. So, super red romaine, alkaline part of the meal. One meal a day, non-GMO organic to the best of your ability. And that's what I have, one meal a day. Buy only what can be recyclable. And we're going to go over some things real quickly here. And then I think I found Bigfoot. All right, so um, I'm going to this for now. So I'm going to try something. Let's start with the salad first. So I have an indoor garden farming that I'm going to share with you briefly and quickly um, as fast as I can here. And I'm going to go over some of the things. Um, it's been working out well. It's June 7th, and I've been doing it since October of 2021. So maybe, what, like seven months, eight months. And um, it's going well. And I'm restarting things. So I'm going to show you it to get you excited. So again, one meal a day, non-GMO organic, veganism. Buy only what's truly recyclable. I'm going to go over that in a second. And, you know, grow your own food if you can. Um, and then I'm going to share with you a spiritual quote or, or some knowledge and wisdom um, and to go along with the whole one meal a day and all the rest of the things I'm explaining. All right. Um, so the avocado is not organic. Um, I'm in California, far northern California. And they could be anywhere from 2 to $3 a piece. It's absolutely ri ridiculous and absurd. Regular or or um, or uh, organic, it, it doesn't matter. When it's a hard shell material like this, and I know you, it could be infected inside maybe because if they're using insecticides or pesticides during the plant process as it grows before it becomes a fruit, you know, you, who knows. But um, you do your best when you can. Um, the, the Super Red Romaine I grew myself, um, it's awesome. And that's what's under here. If you never had it, it's a little bit on the bitter side. Not too much. It's not like dandelion green bitter. Um, the tomato is not organic from my little store here, but I grow my own organic non-GMOs. So we'll hopefully get those started. The peaches is non-GMO but from a can. The uh, onion is an organic green onion. The cucumber this time around again is not. They're still around 3 to $4 a piece for organic cucumbers, and mine aren't finished yet. Um, let's see. What else is in there? Uh, the basil is, and I think that's it. So you got peach, tomato, cucumber, avocado, super red romaine, green onion, um, I said tomato, and then basil. All right, so that's like the alkaline part of the meal. And what else do I do here? So I'm going to have this green grass juice. This one is a strawberry lemonade. Look it up online for all the different grasses that are in it and foods and everything like that. Sometimes this doesn't even want to focus at all. And these guys are incredibly tiny. So to give you an idea, it's just like barley grass, wheat grass, chlorella, spirulina, spinach, um, broccoli, barley grass, and then there's tons of other stuff. Each flavor has its own thing. So I do strawberry lemonade, I do tangerine, I do chocolate, I do watermelon, I do lemon lime, and I used to do pineapple, but they don't have that anymore. Um, or at least my, my online store doesn't. Here's spirulina. I add about maybe a quarter tablespoon, excuse me, quarter teaspoon every time. And if it focuses, you can see what it's got in it. The new jar doesn't have in it, but I checked out the um, correspondence email with the woman from the company. She sent me all the science and the spec and the data. All the stuff is basically the same. Some went up, some went down. It's a freshwater and saltwater system that they grow it in. It's in Hawaii. So it's really cool. Do your research. I picked these guys because of a lot of different reasons. All right. And that adds a lot of stuff to it. Um, sometimes I have bolts. Sometimes I don't. But um, here's something that you can get into. This one's the best because it's raw. It's called Garden of Life. It's a raw meal. You can make smoothies. You can mix them in water. You can mix them in non-dairy milk. Whatever you want. This one ain't bad. It doesn't have as much vitamins and minerals as this guy. Uh, this one has a lot of vitamins and minerals. It's equal with this but again, that's raw, and this one's the top dog when it has tons of stuff in it. Just check the ingredients. Make sure you're not allergic to anything. They're all non-GMO, organic, and vegan. That's The only difference is that's raw. And the other only difference is that's super expensive, and I only buy it once in a while or if it's on sale. Um, for comparison, this is a 40-gram scoop, 18 servings, and they price this thing anywhere between 50 and 55 bucks. It's outrageous. If I can get it for 40 42 then I buy it. So 18 servings. 40 gram scoop. Now this is the little guy, so I have to go by the big guy. The big guy is around the same, like 34, 35 gram scoop. So you're looking at, let's say 35, you're looking at five grams less. Um, but this has a 28 day supply. And again, it's raw. And this thing at its highest price is about $44. All right? Compared to like say 52 average. So if you like that, 
and get it that. If the chocolate versions of, of this and this, eh, they're kind of blah. You could always add a little bit of raw cocoa to it. But they're not just protein. They're, all, they're each 20 grams of protein. They're like a replacement meal. They're filled with all kinds of stuff. There's the ingredient list on there. It's just huge. And the minerals and the vitamins and all that. All right? Sometimes I have both. Sometimes I don't. Now, what am I doing as a meal? You can make your own. You can get naked jackfruit. You can use your own barbecue sauce. You can make your own barbecue sauce. I tried this as a vegan, organic, non-GMO, all that kind of great stuff. It's um, very, very low in sugar. Here's the ingredients. When you see the word triacle a couple times, it's the flower stem of a coconut tree and of the jackfruit tree. And that's what they're using the sap, the sap from that, to sweeten it. All right? And what I'm doing today is an open face sandwich. I'm going to try this open face sandwich on a piece of bread. And then I smothered it with my homemade cheese. I'll link the cheese underneath. It's basically cashews, a little bit of olive oil, and this shaker cheese stuff. That's a Parmesan shaker cheese, vegan cheese. is really good by Drive Market. I mix that all together, whip it all up, and I spread it like cheese. It works out wonderful. We're going to see what it does with this. I'm also going to do one pizza with this new sauce. Um, when I'm not making my own sauce, I'll do this. Once in a while, I'll grab a, a jar. I'll try out some new stuff. This is really, really good. Mir Glenn. And here's the stuff. Maybe. You can always look it up online. All right, and what I'm going to do with both of them, a little bit of parsley, a little bit of onions after it's done. Let me show you. So they're almost done in the oven, so I want to get a hurry up on this so I can finish this. So the indoor farming I started in October, like I said. Um, I started with four to six little strawberries, and now I have like almost 29. There's going to be a baby growing 29. I just cut this one from its mother over there. And as you can see, they're flowering and they're fruiting over here. And um, so I got tons of strawberries. I wasn't expecting them to all have babies, and some of them had two at a time. It was amazing, awesome. So now I have tons of them. And here's a good example of one plant that's growing really beautiful. And look at all the berries and stuff over there. And look at all the berries over here. So, you know, they do their thing. And then there's my herbs, fresh basils, I mean, basil, 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 cilantro. Excuse me, that was going to be cilantro too. Um, and then parsley. The parsley outside that made it through the winter and everything is huge. It's awesome. That's where I'm getting my parsley from. And it's just some wildflowers. I was hoping to show you my baby mantises. I had three of them in this room, but they've been hanging out in this plant and now all of a sudden they disappear and I can't find them. I gotta be really careful. They're only like an inch long and they're basically the color of a light, light tan. They're almost the color of that right there. And of course it matches my carpet, right? So I got cucumbers growing here. And these are the tomatoes, and then yellow peppers, and these will be either green bell or I'll let them turn to red. Now, the story behind this is organic non-GMO Roma tomato, organic non-GMO red bell pepper, ate them, planted the seeds outside on my balcony. I'm a second floor apartment, and I do it outside on the grounds they allowed me. And I've been eating them and reseeding them and eating them and reseeding them. As you can tell, they grow well with the lights. Um, that's going to be a cucumber-like silvery purple eggplant these will be brussels sprouts that's social garlic and these are celeries carrots um, as far as the lighting system goes i'm trying to run through this fast they these shelves are 63 dollars. that's tax included you can get them white you can get them black you can get them chrome they're three feet 16 inches deep six feet high five adjustable shelves 63 dollars for one of them ain't bad it's very very sturdy they're awesome um, and as you can tell from a side view, that's a five-gallon bucket. There, there's a lot of room for it to grow, and the adjustable shelves are awesome for doing that. Those are eight-inch pots, so you can see how well it is right there. And when it gets warmer, these will go outside. It's June, but it's been cloudy, and the weather's been off. G grow lights, full-spectrum red and blue, even though they shine white. They're two foot, uh, yeah, two foot, four inches, three inches. That's what they look like. They plug into each other and then it goes into a surge protector on the bottom. $40, I got them at $30, then they went up to $38. Again, Walmart online, awesome prices. They're normally $50 to $55. Two foot covers everything. I mean, everything you see lit up behind me and everything is all from this light. And it's awesome. And again, you can see the baby plants, the baby plants, the ones that are flowering already. It works perfect. They're, they're excellent. And again, if you had two rack system like this, like um, what I have with the shelf, You'd have $63 and then let's say 40 and 40. So 80, right? 80 and then the 60. 
you'd have 140, 150 with tax for one of these. You know, now I add another 40 or $50 with tax if you want to have three light system. All right, so it's real fun. It's good. You can you know do this all your home, your family, single, married, whatever it is. All right, to show you some melons, I'm trying some melons, some melons, some dills, uh, more tomato, golden potatoes, which are little guys, non-GMO organic. I seeded them. Um, everything else is from seeds and, and stuff, except the strawberries are from root. That's um, a potato that I seeded, or two of them that I've seeded. Um, then again, more and more strawberries. And here's another baby. This is what it looks like, in case you don't know. Although this one is incredibly thin because this baby, I just redid this baby into a pot and it's already giving a baby already, like barely even grew. You know what I mean? Like do, these guys are the more mature ones. Um, and then you can see they're burying out here as well. So I have a hard time with the lettuce. The romaine came out awesome, but a lot of these lettuces, and this one is looking like it's not going to do it either. I got some spinach and lettuce. It's growing upwards instead of growing like a lettuce right from the get-go. And I do not know why. It's cool out here. It's cool at night. And uh, I've been trying it. So there's lettuces and spinaches here. And I'm going to have like, let's show you. Radishes, dwarf blueberries over there, dwarf strawberry, wild mint that keeps coming up year after year. It's awesome. Some pumpkin that I'm trying. And then uh, this giant tomato is growing pretty good here. And these are going to be like herbs again and onions and um, some more tomato, red bell pepper, and then tons of herbs. Um, and what else did I want to say? And again, everything's non-GMO and organic. So this is a second floor apartment and balcony. So you see what I'm doing. So if you have a home, you can do your whole outside yard and turn it into a beautiful park, forest garden, park yard home. And uh, if you have indoors, you can do it indoors in a garage, a basement, wherever. All right, so I wanted to share that with you to show you what I'm doing to get you inspired on some things. And before my food burns or anything, let me um, show you a quote about eating and um, spiritualness. Call it occult knowledge, call it metaphysical, esoteric, whatever you want. Let me show you. So you could pause this and read it on your own. But basically this came from, uh, it was about an ancient site and ancient stuff on a video or whatever. And somebody made a comment. So basically from the Garden of Eden, is all I wanted to show you, Adam and Eve, you know, the Tree of Life, read that, and um, you can pause, and I'm going to continue to talk right now, uh, so you might want to pause after, I guess. So the point is, I eat one meal a day, and I have for a long time, and you can live basically without any food at all. It's all about energy, energy centers, energy system in the body. I had an awakening 10 years ago, that led me to this. Other, before that, I had no clue. If somebody said metaphysical, Buddha, spiritual... Uh, chakras stuff like that I would have been like what get get out of here you know I wouldn't have been I would have listened but I probably was too joking around at that time to, especially if I was younger but now I understand all this stuff so I want to share it with you so when you see it about how they're living off of raw food and everything's there raw food and they barely cooked anything only the people outside the garden which would be lesser humans lesser conscious humans so for instance we have a high society technology where we evolved a lot but we lost a lot of our spirituality. A lot of spirituality in the East is still there, but not in the Western cultures. They, they did religious root and they coded everything and they got lost in, in, in tons of uh, religious crap. Um, now there are, there are people that are less evolved that do know spiritual stuff. Um, you know, people in the Amazon, uh, stuff like that. But when, you, when I'm saying lesser conscious people to compare to why they're saying outside of the garden people cooked their food and did all that, is because those people weren't evolved or spiritually awakened. So you look to, like, say, the Congo of Africa, um, anywhere in the Amazon and stuff, you know, the, the very lesser evolved people, the bones in their noses, their ears dangling, you know, really uh, pulling their ears and their lips out and all that kind of stuff, eating bugs and all that, that's like the lesser people they're talking about at that time period back then. And where the higher conscious people that were roaming the earth were living off of connection to energy, connection to the earth, connection to the light within themselves and raw food, raw food. And some people, uh, I'm not going to get into now, but some people didn't have to eat at all. And it shows one meal a day, stuff like that. So this comes from a book that was what they call channeled material um, med in a meditative state. If you ever heard of Edgar Cayce, Edgar Cayce also speaks a lot about this. And he was a diehard Christian. He was actually a Christian teacher, um, but he had these awakening experiences and trance-like meditations and he talked about beings from the stars and Atlantis and Jesus' time and all kinds of stuff 
and he has these kind of knowledge and wisdom. He even has a, they might even have a, um, a cookbook and a diet system at the Edgar Casey Foundation. It's called like A-R-E. I don't know what it stands for. It's like something research something, but it's based off of Edgar Casey. So I'm sharing this with you. So you get excited about everything on all levels and that you have to understand that we are the best spiritual biological technology there is. We just were never taught and we were never practiced in it. Um, because most of the world, even the Eastern cultures that do spiritual stuff, they know a lot about this, but they talk a good game, but they don't really actually apply it. You have to apply it, and to apply it, you have to know that it even exists, and you not have to st study it just mentally, but you have to actually embody it and have experiences it, of it to really truly understand it and then to become it. And that's basically you know, what I tell everybody for all these years. You know, be your own Christ, be your own light, be your own source creator within, and it really is a spiritual, sacred science. So that's why it's important when I, when I tell you about a lot of different things. You know, whether it's the food, it's the diet, it's the raw, it's the non-GMO, it's spiritual stuff, it's a um, be aware about what you buy and what you waste and uh, recycling and animals. It, it, it all is connected. All right? So I want to share that with you. Get you excited about it as much as I can. All right, and real quickly here, I said I, I thought I saw Bigfoot. So I got this beautiful thing that came on my computer this morning when I opened it up. And right away, my awareness was really quick with this. I thought, wow, this is beautiful. What the heck is that? I don't know if they did this on purpose as a joke, but, and I, I have to bring it up. I took a picture of it. I'll bring it up on my computer and, and try to get a um, close-up of it. You know, at first you think it's a stump or something, but it sure doesn't look like it. It looks like a little ape, a little ape like a chimp or something. I don't know, pause it, bring it up on your thing, whatever you have to do, check it out. It's, it's interesting though. <laughs> and real briefly here, before I get this meal going, um, even in the Bible, there's, there's things called the Puranas, there's things called the Vedas, there, there's all kinds of uh, Asian texts, and not many people follow it. Like I said, they speak a good game, but they don't follow. But there are a lot of people who are vegan, and... and and live that lifestyle for compassion and they know the effects on the body and then there's a very very slight few that truly practice like energy or striving for that or something like that um, in the Bible it does state uh, and again that Bible has been written and rewritten probably a hundred times or more and it's been collected from almost all cultures from all throughout Africa Europe Asia and everything has been collaborated the Middle East into one quote-unquote book but it really is just papers and notes and books and experiences from others from all over the place. I wouldn't doubt it if it comes like the pre-flood stuff comes probably from Atlantis type cultures way before the flood and all that kind of stuff. Going back 20,000 plus years we're talking. And so it's a collection of things. But in that book, again, it speaks very, very like story-like and almost speaks to like a, a teacher to a kindergarten child. Uh, that's why I couldn't stand going to that stuff. Um, but... It it says like every tree, every nut, every seed, every grass, every blah blah blah, was is for all the creatures and the creeping things, and for humans. No nowhere in there does it say that you should eat and kill a, your friendly animal um, to eat. It says nothing about eating meat in the Bible. It's all about nuts, seeds, grains, fruits, and, and everything's there ready to go right from the tree. All right, so that's in the Bible. The book of Urantia that I, that quote came from is like an Edgar Casey channeled material. You got to pick. Pick to see what you feel, what it aligns with you, what resonates with you energetically. But you can't really do that unless you're clean. And to get clean, you got to back away from people, places, and things, and you got to clean your diet. You can't say, oh, that resonates with me. You can have a gut feeling or an intuition, but I'm telling you right now from experience before and after awakening, you have to clean your diet and everything. Because a lot of people say they live from their heart, but they're technically living from their mind, even if they're trying to do something good. And energy, heart, mind, balanced like togetherness unified it is where everybody in humanity has to be and then our whole society will evolve okay so I took this a little bit too much but you can see underneath the gooeyness right there there we go there we go the gooeyness and the oil brings that out it has that cheese flavor it's not burnt a little bit maybe too crispy for my liking I let it go a little bit too long but there you go. So I'm going to put this together real quick. All right. So I just dressed it up with some uh, of the onion and the parsley. 
and again, store bought organic uh, for the onion, but the parsley is from my garden and it's awesome. I'll let that cool for a minute. And I just want to share with you, so I, I explain all this stuff, and I set out to do something, but I got a little bit sidetracked and, and railroaded, I guess that's the term. Um, it's not easy, you know, once you awaken. It, it, it's supposed to be, but it, it didn't work out that way for me. Um, so I'm trying to balance out um, what I taught you and what that quote is and how I eat. I'm also trying to balance out making a couple cool design foods once in a while. Um, I don't have many. I have maybe 10 different meals maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe a little more. And what I'm trying to balance out is that for, for myself as best I can, but while still incorporating this once in a while to help with the veganism. I know there's a lot of vegan channels out there now, a lot of great stuff, um, but most of them are just vegans for a compassionate, save the animals, good for your, your body kind of thing, but not understanding the spiritual nature or the um, energy nature beyond that. And they have great meals and everything, but a lot of them are overboard. There's a couple good raw vegan channels out there, but a lot of the cooking stuff is vegan, but they go overboard and it might not always be the best for you anyway, or it might be overload. So I'm trying to balance, like, to keep me on that path to what I just showed you and to bring in some different ideas and, re and recipes that are simple, 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 and easy for somebody to make or for their kids or for their kids to make and balance it out where I'm not eating too much cooked stuff and I'm eating more of this and drinking that kind of stuff and tons of water and, and just living happily ever after, you know what I mean? And and doing the whole, you know, um, spiritual type thing, which is basically just trying to stay higher conscious and not get sucked into, a, you know, anything like that. Like I haven't owned a TV for eight plus years and, you know, you just do nature and you'll enjoy the animals and you learn internally and externally at a more conscious aware state like you awaken to like where the nothing really of the old even is anything I like anymore um, you know I used to go to hockey games all the time and and watch MMA and um, you know all that kind of stuff and, and you know, go to the racetrack or go to Atlantic City and you know, go out and listen to a band none of that even resonates anymore there's certain things I like but most of it all deals with nature now, if I had a skimboard and lived on the coast, I would do something like that because um, it's more natural and, and, and healthy. Um, you know, hey, let's run to the mall or let's go get a bite to eat at this place where it's all loud and noisy and, you know, nah. You just you, you get it as natural as you can and harmonious as you can with yourself, your mind, your heart, your music. Everything changes and you evolve to different things. Back in the day, I lifted and I needed 60 grams of protein and I bought this weight gainer that was made with whey protein which comes from cow's milk and guess what happened to me years down the road yeah kidney stones woohoo so I didn't know this stuff back then there was hardly anything like this I'm 50 years old so you go back 25 35 years ago they didn't have this kind of stuff it was very very expensive if it was even there and it was barely even known you know what I mean but if it was, I would have had it. I used to do raw honey and bee pollen and spirulina and stuff years ago like that. But I never really knew any about this kind of stuff. So when I awakened, I took it to the next level. It was automatic. Old program out, new program in. This is what we're doing. This is how we're living. All right. So I wanted to share that with you all. This is the second time I made a video that spoke about that. I might add stuff to that all the time. But, you know, spread the word. Give it a try. You got to look at your ancient texts a lot different than you see them, especially when there were people who didn't understand an experience or they rewrote something from somebody else and they didn't understand the interpretation, you know, um, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of metaphorical, a lot of uh, um, analogies and stuff that, that were made for simple people at simple times. And, um, you know, a lot of it is sacred spiritual science. All right. Lots of love to you as well. Hope this excites you and inspires you on all levels. All right. Bye-bye. Love you.